I'm out here at a friend of mine, uh, John Jennings' house, and uh, in Indiana, getting ready for the show in October. And he's got, he's a big Ford guy, um, big fan of the Fords, but he's got some cool ones. But uh, he's got this cyclone before me, back behind me here, and uh, I want to get a minute and have him tell us a little bit about it. So let me run John down, and we'll take a look at it. John, how are you, brother? Good, Scotty. How are you doing today? <laughs> Not too bad. First of all, let me just tell you thanks so much for your hospitality and all you do for me, man. Thank uh, you so much. Scotty, I'm just I'm excited about seeing what you do with cars and the chances you get people to get exposure on their stuff and, and get people to appreciate all the hard work that goes into building this stuff. So anything I've got, you're welcome to look at and shoot. I appreciate it. Tell me a little bit about this hot rod. Uh, I built this car in 2007. It's a 1964 Mercury Cyclone. It is an original Cyclone. Um, they came with what's called a K-Code engine, which was a 289, but Ford, in order to protect the image of the Mustang that was out uh, the following spring, lim and the Fairlane, which was out that year, limited the Mercury to a 225 horsepower motor. So uh, the Mercury K-Code, unlike the Ford, which was the 271 horse motor, this was Mercury's hot rod, but it was uh, pretty underpowered. Right, and so, so what, now it ain't underpowered now. No, not now. So, what did you uh, put in it? We, uh, we took the car, brought it in, put it on a rotisserie, and uh, there was a company out of Australia called RRS that made a coilover strut front end on it, very similar to what you'd put in a 2002 Mustang. So we took and uh, completely redid the car, uh, put a Ford 9-inch uh, four-link rear end underneath it. Uh, it's got a custom interior by Chris Customs. Um, all the electronics and stuff is up underneath the uh, where the uh, glove box was. Got the uh, boost control, uh, the uh, rev limiter boost control, MSD, and all the wiring's up there. And uh, then I'll get the engine. Uh, you can shut off. that glove compartment though and close those gauges up. Yep, then absolutely. yeah, yeah, that's I got cool. Got it set up so that you fold it up. Right. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Fold it up. That's how they work. It stays. <laughs> well, it doesn't stay well. We get a blooper every now and then. Folks, it's a quality built car, but you know how these hot rods are. I tell you, if you want something reliable or you want something that's going to be an investment, then, you know, go to the stock market or go to the new car dealership. Because well, it's close to 50 years old, so that, that kind of helps a little bit. Anyway, we put a coilover strut front end in it, which allows us to cut open the shock towers a little bit. And this is a 438 cubic inch Windsor Stroker motor uh, built by Felice Engines. And we put a 1500 Novi Paxton supercharger with a Pro Systems blow through carb. Um, right now, on pump gas, I can make about 7 pounds of boost. On racing fuel, I can crank it up about 11 pounds of boost. They dynoed the base motor at five and a quarter horse without the supercharger. It's got a comp cam supercharger cam in it, so that's pretty good horsepower numbers. When we add the boost to it, Paxton's telling us we should be adding between 200 and 250 horsepower. So it means the motor's putting out between seven and a quarter and 775 horse, depending on the boost we're running. Uh, now, do you have to, to run that boost? You have to run race fuel in it then. Uh, yeah, when I put the when I put the race fuel in it, I can crank the timing up. I've got an adjustable boost sensing timer on the MSD box. For every pound of boost I get, I can advance the timing or I can retard the timing. So when I'm running pump gas, I retard it so it retards it about a half a degree for every pound of boost, so that I don't blow the motor up. When I'm running race fuel, I can crank about two degrees of timing into it. So the more boost we make, the more timing we get, the more horsepower we make. I got you. Did some kind of interesting things with this. We actually raised what's left of the shock tower by three inches, which lowered the car three inches, and that gave me a little more room for an ABS power brake system. Now, it doesn't look like a power brakes, but if you underneath the inner fender panel there, we have a hydraulic pump that creates 2,100 pounds of pressure and that feeds, when I turn the key on, that feeds pressure to that master cylinder and that proportions brakes front and reel. So it's got the most incredible sets of brakes you can. But can, it's you, a, can you adjust that proportion? You got a proportioning no, valve so, in it? Well, you can by putting a proportioning valve in it, okay. but it's pre-proportioned for disc brakes on all four wheels. And I it you. is a great stopping system. No, it's a beautiful car. Got air on it, uh, made the, the custom control rods for the top. Uh, running Lentec AOD, you know, I kind of like those at Lentec AODs. Right. Uh, we actually built our own core support, put a massive radiator in a thing. That way we run, we run the air and stuff. And then that's a Kreitz uh, uh, Comet AFX hood. And we, obviously since we're in a blower, but we had to get hood clearance, so we actually uh, had to, had cut, to a cut a hole in the hood to clear the blower cap. Yeah, it's too bad this part of it wasn't back there. Then, yeah, yeah, we could have we hooked it up. Yeah. So, but, 
Yeah, so uh, you painted the bumpers and all, man. Yeah, those are actual fiberglass bumpers, fiberglass hood, and then the rest of the car is a solid steel car, virtually a rust free car. We found it out in Nebraska. Wow. And then Mark's chassis made a full uh, rear four link setup for it, and then we tied it together with subframe connectors, the coil over strut front end, and then we actually have a hidden roll cage in the car. There's actually a roll bar that comes from the front suspension here up to the firewall, ties into the firewall. And then down at the bottom ties into the subframe connectors, and then we put a bar behind the seat that ties the rear suspension together. You can see the bar is kind of hidden by the window post, but right. there's actually a roll bar inside the car. Sure enough. And we, we've got the chassis stiff enough now, if I put a jack under one corner, I can jack three wheels off the ground. Sweet. And what's, what are those seats out of? Those are actually out of an Olds Bravada. No kidding. And Chris custom covered them for me and uh, made the door panels and everything. I, I like to make interiors look like stock, but not. Right. And and Chris, uh, Sean did a really nice job on doing that. No, he sure did. And I'll tell you, I love that cyclone with that racing flag on there. Is that how it would have came? That was factory. That's a factory piece. No kidding. That's yeah. cool, man. The wheels are Vintec 45s. We're running a 245. Uh, 40. I'm sorry, a 275, 48, 17 on the back, and a two. 35, 40, 70, 18 on the um, front. So you got bigger tires on the front than on the back? Uh, they're narrower. But yeah, but one's a 17, one's an 18, you were saying. Yeah, I'm sorry. 18's in the back, 17's on the back. front. I got you. Yeah, okay. backwards on that. Yeah, it happens. No, very nice. Yeah. I put about six, six, 7,000 miles on the car. I got a couple thousand miles a year. When I, when I get a new one built, I kind of don't drive the old one. But like I said, the paint on this, was, uh, it's a seven-year-old paint. And, uh, Who? What kind of paint is it? Um, uh, Evers Collision did that with a BASF base coat clear coat, and cool. that is Wimbledon white. Sweet. That was original color back then. Yep. Yeah. The car actually was originally a white uh, Wimbledon white car. Now, did you did you as a little boy dream about having one of these hot rodded? I always loved. I I, I always liked the Falcons. But uh, being a big guy, the Falcon always seemed kind of cramped to me. Right. Well, when I saw this Mercury Cyclone for the first time, from from door to rear there is all Falcon sheet metal, right. Falcon parts. The doors are interchangeable with Falcons. Mercury added 10 inches overall length with the quarter or the rear quarter panel being the biggest length extension, and it just made the car look longer and swoopier. I bet it's got a heck of a trunk on it. Yeah, it's pretty good size. Almost looks like it almost looks like a Ranchero. Like I've been in it since the last no. car show, so I'll we'll take a peek. Oh, no, it's nice. Yeah, no, you yeah. finished that and out, too. We've got, we've got all our electronics and stuff. Batteries and everything are hidden behind this. You pop that panel, and then the whole panel comes out, and all my batteries, dual batteries and everything are in there. That way, they, 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 you can pause it, folks. You can kind of see a little bit about it. And we give a shout-out to everybody there. Everest Collision Works. That's our boy Tim. That's our boy Tim. Yeah. And uh, he is Everest Collision. Yeah. When I was building this car, I was sitting around in the winter time, and I hate idiot lights and I hate fake gauges. And I was sitting on my bench inside working, and I I had a uh, oil pressure gauge that I'd used to test my motors with, you know. So you, before you get them all done, you fire them up in the chassis. And I got looking at it, and I got looking at the dash. And I pulled the dash apart and found out that it's the perfect size for auto gauge gauges. So I got a full set of real mechanical auto gauge gauges and morphed them into the uh, instrument cluster. Stock instrument cluster. Yep. So I got speedometer and all the right Everything's all original. The, the, the dash bezels, everything's original. And uh, we morphed in behind them all the original gauge or all the aftermarket uh, mechanical gauges. So it's real life stuff. Man, it's a nice car, brother. And then. Because this is such a nice car, you built what you call the evil twin. Yeah, well, the evil twin's a copy off the original Galaxy that we got. Okay. But, uh, yeah, this one we made, this people, a lot of people think they, they actually made a Thunderbolt version of the Comet, and it was, uh, they, they called it a number of things, the Lightning Bolt, uh, the Mercury AFX car. So we kind of went for that Pro Touring look and kind of went for the opposite side of the Mercury version of the Thunderbolt with right. the car. No, bro, that's a nice car. Well, thank you. Very nice car. Man. There's no room to run the exhaust up over the rear, so we found a guy out in or or in Colorado that makes ovalized pipe. So we run ovalized pipe, and then we made the side pipes there to kind of the old mass car side pipes. No, I like that a lot. Actually, there's nothing. I like the old torque thrust type wheels on it. Yep. You know, it's got that uh, cast in the middle of it and a polished lip on it. Yep. Very cool. 
No, brother. Thanks so much for taking the time to do this, man. It's a great car. Thanks. Glad, glad you're liking it. No, I love it, man. Folks, there you go. You said 64, right? Yep, 64. There you go, 64 Mercury Cyclone from uh, my buddy John's house here in Indiana. Hope you all have enjoyed it. See you.